Hi, and welcome to another repaint video. This one took a while, mostly because I got so much help with inspiration. Thank you so, so much for all the kind comments on my last video. You wrote awesome suggestions for this theme and were such a big help. This is my second to last Monopoly repaint, and she's based on the wheelbarrow, which means a farmer's theme. I ended up making a bunch of miniatures as props, which was super fun. It becomes a challenge. How small miniatures can I make? It needs to be at scale, but realistic, and I had a blast making it all, which might be why I was left with 30 13 hours of footage. This doll makes me yearn for spring. Winter is not my favorite season, since I hate freezing and I freeze a lot. I'm like a lizard and start hibernating, at least mentally, when the frost comes. I'm like, survival mode initiated, and I walk around grumpy in my Pikachu suit at home. It's the warmest piece of clothing I have, so yeah, there's that. Enough whining and complaining, let's dive into this project. I used Venus McFly Trap as a base, I love her green color, she fits perfectly with my farm theme. As usual I start with heating the head with a blow dryer before gently pulling the head off, then I cut the hair close to the scalp before scraping it out with a flat screwdriver. Then I make an incision with my X-Acto knife to take the rests out. To remove the flocking I saturate it with 100% acetone, wait a couple of seconds and then scrape it off with the blunt end of the knife. I always feel a bit sad doing this, her side cut flocking is so cool. After removing it I clean the paint off with more acetone. Now it's time for the face up! First I sketch the outlines of the eyes with brown and red watercolor pencils, then I draw the base for the irises. I decided to give her one blue and one brown eye. There is just something about heterochromatic eyes that it's just beautiful. To make the gradient softer I use pastels inside the iris, then I outline with black on both eyes. For blushing I used red. Out of all my Monopoly dolls she is the most grown up one, so I tried giving her a more mature look. Well, I tried, I'm not saying I succeeded. I also added blue pastels to the temples before blushing the lips and calling it a day. The second layer and I enhance everything I made on the previous one. I decided to add red to warm up the brown eyes and then I worked on the highlighting with my white watercolor pencil. I decided to make her blush heavy, like a sunburn, since she's an outdoor character. Then I gave her eyebrows that looked kind of troubled. Of course, I added freckles too. I used pastels and water to make them, adding what looks like way too much before poking it and softening them. Then I can easily erase some and repeat the process, creating layers. I drew some light blue veins to make it more realistic and finally worked more on the blushing and eyelashes before saving the process with MSC and moving on to the next layer. In the third layer there's not much to see, honestly. I add more color and highlight, but I also use my black watercolor pencil quite a lot. I'll keep this short. Before the final layer I paint some beauty spots, then I finish it all off with white acrylics. So I tried out red lips and was like, nah, looked super weird, so I rubbed it off and finally gave her some shine with this cheap makeup thing. And this is the final result. I am really happy with it. Next I work on making the body match the face. I scrape the seams and sand them lightly if needed. Also cut off the damaged plastic, someone had played with this toy and it's pretty normal damage. Then like on so many Venus dolls, her kneecaps needed some cosmetic surgery. So I cut off some pieces and sanded them down, making them smooth. After a coat of MSC I work on body blushing, giving it freckles and whatnot to make it match the face. Yeah, well, that's close enough. I just needed to add some shine and veins. Next, I make three incisions inside the neck, cut the neck peg and reattach the head. 
For hair, I make yarn wefts, same old, same old. I love the gradient in this yarn. Cut it, tie it, brush it, and flatten it. Then I cut it and glue it onto my crafting mat. While that dries, I take my time to paint the scalp. It was just a precaution in case the wefts had some thinner patches, but in the end it wasn't necessary. Better safe than sorry though. Then I glue the hair all around, giving her a side parting. Here I flip over the final wefts and heat set them with my iron. Then she looked super cute, not the style I had in mind though. I braided her hair, which was hard to show since I held the body with my knees while braiding. It goes all around her head and I love it. So this is what I have so far and she was in desperate need of a hat. I've had this thing for the longest time, waiting for the right time to use it, but it was too frilly and cute so I made my own hat. First I hot glued a piece of plastic from a Kinder Egg onto a plastic sheet, then I used craft glue while twirling the thin string around. I think I'll make more of these just for fun. There was glue all over my workplace and myself, but it was so worth it. After almost drying I pulled the hat off, then I was thinking of airbrushing it, but I kept it green. Just in case, I paint a generous layer of glue on the underside, then I leave it overnight to dry completely, then I glued some strings onto it. It would have been cute with ribbon, but I didn't have thin ones in the right color. Then I started making tiny flowers. I used this paper punch for the first time, not knowing which way to put the paper in, but in the end I managed to make stars. Next I rounded the stars with a dotting tool and a piece of foam before gluing them together into something that looked like flowers. This is a fast drying paper glue and was perfect for the occasion. Then, since I used rather thick paper, I could part the layers making more petals. Finally, to make them more lively, I blushed them with pastels. They got some stamens made from an old disliked brush glued into the middle. I keep telling my brushes that if they misbehave this is what happens. Finally I added tiny blobs of gold paint to them before cutting them off the paper strip. Then I glued them into her hair. It looked empty, so I added some leaves, flowers and ribbons. To make the ribbon hang over the edge, I heat set it carefully with my iron, but I forgot to record that. There we go, so much better. I bought this pattern from DG Requiem on Etsy and decided on making the longer skirt and the blouse. So I first made the blouse, adding the color to the bodies, before hand sewing the sleeves. I love how the sleeves are ruffled like this, it's so darn cute. Then I turned it right side in and sewed the sides. It won't need any buttons, since I'll tie it close in the end. Next is the skirt. There is a base and I sewed rows of ruffles on top of it. This looks like jellyfish tentacles and after ironing it's much easier to sew onto the base. I've never been prouder of myself at this point, honestly. The next three layers of ruffles got some lace on top, then I gathered the top of the skirt and attached the waistband. Finally I fixed the trim, did some minor alterations to fit better and finally sewed a snap button onto it. I tried it on another doll's body and concluded I did not like the white fabric. It was too bright and, well, white. So I made some tea, the tasty kind. I once did this with tea I did not like and threw the fabric away because it was stinking. It was a waste, but it was necessary to throw it away. They go into the hot water, steep for a little while, and then I dunk the clothes into it. Good soup. You can see here that it already got some colors, one tea bag might have been enough. So I just dunked it in, waited a minute or so, and then pulled them out, trying to wring out as much water as possible. Then I put them on the doll before they dry and manipulate the fabric. After drying, I added some leaves and flowers, then moved on to shoes. I used Venus's shoes, rubbed the paint off with acetone, and painted them with the Army Painter acrylics. After painting, I brushed them with black pastels for a more real and worn look. It makes a huge difference. To make the details stand out more, I dry brushed with light green, then painted the seams. Finally, I painted the laces. It's 
So uh, I finished the basic outfit and at this point I didn't know what to do with my life. I wanted to do embroidery so I made small fall leather bags. In the Monopoly gang she's the herbalist and potion maker so she needed bags for her stuff. And finally I think I've learned how to make proper French knots. These are not bad. While embroidering I sew the edges with blank stitches too. The fall leather has for some reason white fabric inside so I painted the white parts with leather brown from the army painter. Then I used a q-tip and watered down black paint to weather it slightly, as with the shoes it really does make a huge difference, I would say. I glued some straps before adding fake lids onto them, is it called lids? It feels wrong somehow to call them that anyway. One of them got some beads inside to give it some texture. Finally I added some tiny flat back pearls as fake buttons. Next are some tiny potions, I used resin, resin dye, parts of the lychee shell and gold flakes. Finally I added some more clear resin, swirled around with a little bit of brown resin dye before corking and putting it under my UV lamp. The second one got brown dye, some fake grass and gems. I made some tiny labels, wrote some unreadable text and attached them with double-sided tape. Then I tie them to two of the bags, then I asked you guys for help. I literally went upstairs every morning just looking at the doll, wondering what to do next and I got so much help. And first, well, I made a wheelbarrow out of many popsicles in different sizes. This little side quest was fun, gluing is my favorite part of crafting and this was basically 80% gluing stuff. So first I made a frame and glued the panels at the bottom. Then I trimmed the edges before cleaning them up with my Dremel. Then I did the same thing with the side panels, I kept the rounded shape on top because it looked cute. I glued together some wooden discs to make a wheel. And this is your reminder that life is too short for boring band-aids. Next I make a contraption for the wheel and glue it. I used two pieces of thin cardboard to create a little gap the wheel needed to turn smoothly. I do not know why, since it will be an ornament, but it felt important at the time. Finally I cut some parts before painting it with watered down brown paint. This does not look half bad. I upgraded it with a small seedling planter. Then I started making tiny female seedlings. Before baking I brushed them with more pastels. The soil is made from coffee grounds and glue, which worked nicely. I also made a bag of garden soil to put in the wheelbarrow, then I dry brushed the seedlings a little before placing the wheelbarrow to the side to dry. Next I wanted to make terracotta pots, but first I had to mix the right color. I used this chart and measure by weighing the colors. I think it's close enough. I mold it around an eraser pen, I've tried doing this before making tiny teacups, but I have a vague memory of swearing never to try it again, and well now I did, and it worked fine. After baking I sand it a bit, it gives it the right terracotta feeling and smoothens out the uneven parts. Feeling brave and a tiny bit stupid, I made small ones on the end of a couple of brushes. I made some tiny flowers using Fimo clay and Fimo liquid.
After adding some flowers and tiny pearls, they were finished. Then I added some fall moss and grass onto it all, sort of binding them all together to give them something in common. Next I wanted to give her gardening gloves, but I realized making gloves that fit her original hands would be too bulky. So instead I used a pair of Claudine hands and glued fabric onto them. This worked out nicely, especially since these hands actually can hold things. First I glued the fingers and added fall leather for the rest. To clean up the edges I paint them a little bit and after that they were finished. If you do something like this make sure the hands fit on the underarms before starting. Next I make a pitchfork of Fimo clay and a wooden dowel. First I bake the fork before attaching it with more Fimo clay. Then after baking a second time I sand it and airbrush it with plate made metal. That way I won't have any brush strokes. I wanted to give it some rust, which I painted by mixing brown, red, yellow and cinnamon. This crafting smelled so good. After painting some spots I glue cinnamon onto them, then when it has dried completely I can gently brush off the biggest grains. It was my first time adding rust and I'm pretty proud of myself. Next I painted a wood dowel and then set it down to dry. Everything except the doll's outfit came from what you guys commented on my last video, so I made a list of all the words, went through it and made another, you know, to-do list. And vegetables were one of them. So I made some tiny tomatoes, cucumbers and carrots. First by sculpting, then blushing them with pastels before baking. After baking I glossed the tomatoes and cucumbers with Tamiya Gloss Varnish. Then the baby carrots got some greens. I blushed the ends with green pastels and it looked so much better. Baby carrots! This is probably not the right way to make a proper basket. I tied a couple of strings together, four of them plus one attached to the spool, hot glued the knot onto the cap and, well, weaved. Then I glued the loose ends and added a piece of fabric. Tiny basket with tiny vegetables. Check. The final prop is straw bales. I have lots of clean straw at home from when I used to have farm animals, long story, but it's the wrong scale, so I had to twist and crush them to make them tiny. Next I made cardboard boxes and glued the tiny straw onto the sides. Some patches needed a second layer of straw and after adding that I tied paper ribbons around them. some final patching and they were done. As usual I made a custom stand, this time by mixing two part resin and more coffee ground. I mix them at a 1 to 2 rate and don't give a fudge about bubbles since there will be coffee in there. It looks like dark chocolate brownie batter but smells like a chemical waste. Hmm. Some rocks and grass later and the resin is ready for 24 hours of curing. I wanted to tear the board to fit around the rocks, so I pressed it against the resin for measurement and then ripped some pieces off. Then I sealed the top part with glue, wait for it to dry and then glue it onto the resin. Finally I rubbed some coffee ground onto it to make it look dirty or at least a bit less new. Then I seal it all with Liquitex matte varnish. After demolding I glue some rocks onto it, and after gluing some rocks onto it I add some grass. Next I drill a hole for the wire, sometime in the future I really want to 3D print instead of using wires, but my house needs repairs at the moment so that has to wait. I make this velvet fabric disc as a final touch on the stand. I bend the wire into a saddle shape and on the first try it fits perfectly. Sweet! So yeah, this was a long journey with many side quests. I usually don't make this amount of props, but your comments gave me this creative boost and I couldn't help myself. I'm so grateful for the help. I've named her Basil, and yes, it's normally a boy's name, who cares, she had hippie parents, it's all fine. If she were a character in the game, she would be a good potion maker. She's kind and caring and likes to take care of others. She and Terry, who's the next character I'll be making, are roommates on a farm. 
Terry will be based on the Scottish Terrier token, which was the most popular suggestion among your comments, and he'll be the last one I'll be making in this series. Also, the first male character, which will be interesting. Eyelashes or no eyelashes, that is the question. To be continued. I'll be skipping Valentine's Day this year, but I'm pretty sure there will be some awesome lovely creations from other artists. I'm super excited to see what they come up with. I'll be saving my idea for Pride Month instead. Some things are worth procrastinating, just saying. So I started with this and ended up with this. Basil, the potion maker, and lots of props. I hope you enjoyed watching the process of this project. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the love and support. Have a nice evening or day, you know, depending on when you're watching this. Bye!